DavidIke.com. Just Google his name. Dave, before we get back into these educated idiots or like insects, highly specialized uh, individuals who are only in their little discipline and fit nicely into the new, the new World Order Illuminati power pyramid into their their place for the master queen bee up at the top. Uh, you've got a lot of websites, a lot of books, a lot of videos. Uh, tell folks where they should go to find out more about those books and videos and materials. Well, davidike.com is, is the, the center of it, really, Alex. So if people go there, um, they'll, they'll be able to go and get all of them. Um, I've, I've written about um, uh, 16 books overall, and uh, it's been a journey like it has for you. It's been a journey of um, seeing that something wasn't right, and then as you keep walking, um, the path just gets bigger, and the information gets bigger, and the picture gets bigger. And, and so, um, you know, we've reached this point today where we now at last starting to get some kind of real fix on the scale of this, and uh, therefore we have a chance of turning it around. Sure. Let's uh, go ahead and get back and finish up your story about talking to just the general public, much more open-minded, much more intelligent, uh, much, uh, you know, just on the facts. People who know about the New World Order are really into info, wide-ranging analysis of different disciplines versus the specialized uh, New World Order minions. Yeah, well, what we've got to do, Alex, is we've got to reevaluate our understanding of intelligence. You know, cleverness is not wisdom. And cleverness without wisdom is the most destructive force on earth. And what happens with uh, left brain dominated cleverness um, in terms of uh, technology and stuff like that? David, let me stop you. I think the, the cord to your phone may be loose because we're losing your audio. Can you check that? Yeah. It's, it's a it's a hotel phone. I can uh, complain. Yeah, I think when um, you're uh, yeah, I would imagine that you're walking around and when it's tugging. No, I'm not. It, I'm, sit, I'm sitting perfectly still. Okay, well, it's what's going on. Sure, I'm coming and going. Uh, but uh, start well, over, yeah. start over. Go back to uh, you yeah, were saying well, when you have uh, these individuals. You were saying cleverness is not uh, wisdom. Yeah, uh, cleverness without wisdom um, is the most destructive force on earth because without the balance of wisdom, cleverness can just you know, go wild and create uh, infinite death and destruction. I mean, it's very, very clever to know how to create an atomic bomb, but it's not wise to do so, especially not to use it. And so we've got these left-brain prisoners running the system who are clever, well, some of them are, some of them are bloody stupid, but they're clever, but they're not, they don't have the balance of uh, wisdom. And intelligence is not just being able to remember, you know, the, who, what size shoes uh, the Normans took in the Battle of Hastings in 1066. It's, it's uh, being able to see things that, that, that less um, uh, intelligent people can't see. And I'll give you an example of the difference. I spoke at uh, the Brixton Academy in London to 2,500 people about a month ago. And in that audience was every, uh, every race, every income bracket, every uh, uh, range of society, age, the lot. And I gave them everything I could give them because the reason they were there is they had open-minded intelligence. But when I spoke to these, quote, brilliant students at Oxford University, I'm sitting in the hotel room in the afternoon thinking, how do I put this in baby steps so these people have any chance of getting it? Uh, it's because we have misunderstood what intelligence is. And intelligence is just not just uh, academia as we perceive it. It's the wisdom to see things, to see the connections things. It, lo it locks into intuition. I agree. Let me ask a question. Rather than thinking. Let me... I bring forward an example of what I think of as wisdom. Exactly. They can come up with a GMO food uh, that makes some huge profits and uh, corners the market on food, uh, and, and that would be clever. But did they, with wisdom, think about what that will even do to their own grandchildren? No. That these clever, wicked people, they just do it because they can in this mad, uh, almost instinctive race to have power, to dominate, to control. The rationale is, well, if I don't do it... Uh, somebody uh, else w will, but also wisdom really is about being tied into the human journey, the human species, realizing we're all uh, connected, 
stupid and not being selfish. I mean, they're clever to have power, but the, the, but they're also uh, blinded in that they think they really are disconnected from the rest of reality. When really, when some soldier rapes and kills a child, they're raping and killing their own soul. Yeah, what they're saying is uh, Einstein said that um, you cannot solve uh, problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. And that's what we're constantly trying to do. And that's why, you know, you, you replace um, a government with another party. But that party, be it Democrat or Republican, Labour or Conservative, is coming in with the same level of consciousness, i.e. the political system's consciousness, as the one it's replacing. So instead of solving problems, it just creates more. And we're at a point now where we need to move to another level of consciousness. And overwhelmingly, this is again connected to getting out of the left brain uh, dominated reality um, so that we can... Uh, see how we're creating these problems because it, 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 if you're at the same level of consciousness that created them you can't see how the problems are being created so you just go round and round and round and what's happening is more and more people who haven't necessarily been through the education system and got degrees and bits of paper and letters after their name they're opening to a, a level of consciousness which is higher than that which created the problems and therefore they can start to see ways out of here now, I want to shift gears into currently what's happening with Iran, why the globalists are devaluing the dollar, why they're preparing to bring us into a world crisis as the springboard to the next level, what things will look like if the Illuminists and their controllers uh, are able to build their their world. So, so, so seeing it from their perspective, their view, what they want, this cold-blooded view, uh, versus what uh, freedom and love and liberty uh, and and, and, and the human revolution. We see these two different revolutions, the, 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 the tyrant's revolution for global domination to, to have the final revolution of total dehumanization, global extermination of 90% of the world's population uh, versus this, uh, for every action there's an equal reaction. We see a rising uh, up against that. So, so as they intensify their juggernaut, their control system, as they throw more coal in the engine and accelerate towards Towards Armageddon, we see another massive force, uh, love and liberty and decency and honor and wisdom, uh, rising up against it. Yeah, it's like the irresistible force um, against the immovable object. And the immovable object, uh, they perceive themselves to be anyway, are, are, are this network of control and enslavement. Um, but it, it's a house of cards. I've been saying this for years. It's a house of cards because we are holding it together. This is the key point we have to understand. Um, you know, I've been saying in this election campaign, just bringing it down to a basic level, you know, that we've had people in this country fine hundreds of pounds for um, putting their wheelie uh, trash bin out on the wrong day, according to the council's day that says they should put it out. And they spy yeah. on your trash. We have to start saying, no, I'm not going to go along with this. Go ahead. We had a guy um, uh, in, the, in the last week here who was fined a hundred pounds by a council for putting a card in his own car saying it was for sale. He was charged with um, uh, trading in the street because he parked it somewhere to go to a shop. Um, now, if we just allow that to happen and say, oh, that's terrible, isn't it ridiculous, what's the world coming to, then, then we're, we're going to um, walk straight into this prison cell that uh, we can't see the bubble. Most people can't see the bars, although they're beginning to. And the, the door's going to click shut, and then we're going to say, oh, hold a second, we're in a cell. What do we do? Well, it's going to be a bit bloody late then. What we need to do now is to have a non-violent, absolutely non-violent, non-cooperation campaign with the system that's enslaving us you know if someone's fine for putting a wheelie bin on the, out on the wrong day then hundreds and thousands of people need to put their wheelie bin out on the wrong day indefinitely until the laws change people need to go around with cards in their cars with adverts on until the until the laws change this is the only way we're going to do it because politicians aren't going to change it politicians are told how to vote because they want to progressive no, they've got the big think tanks that, that, that and the party heads manage them i wanted to bring this up two years ago i was in uh, in england two and a half years ago right after the london bombing for terror storm my film 
And uh, the police, when I was being quiet, I'd be standing there videotaping somewhere in London or outside London, and cops would walk over and say, I'm putting you in a database. You're not allowed to videotape in this country. Uh, no. uh, uh, I'd be talking to crowds of people. They'd walk over and say, you're not allowed to talk to people. Uh, and uh, it was before they banned protest around Parliament. It was about yeah. a week later they did, and they just said, we don't care. You're not allowed to be here. No law. And now they're even coming up to mainline reporters. And how did they get these police, these bodies? to with pleasure come over and, and now it's in the British news they harass everyone even mainline reporters they tell people don't talk to others in the streets I mean this is worse than East Germany and it just happened overnight David yeah well I, I had a, a, a shall we say a, a, an animated discussion with some policemen when I was filming a television program and they, they, I was in Parliament and they came over to me and said uh, excuse me have you got permission I said well, permission I said I pay taxes to, to pay for this place and they said, oh, well, uh, we had to come over because we've got cameras all around Parliament Square, so we had to come over and see what you were doing. I said, well, you've got cameras all over Parliament Square. Uh, uh, look at your screens and you'll see. Go away. And, and this has happened very quickly, and there's something going on.